Hi Bixby. Say hello to the viewers. Welcome to Attack It Out. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon to get notifications about new videos. Hi and welcome back to Tech It Out. It's been quite a while since I received the M.2 for the Threadripper build, but I've been extremely busy in the meantime. But today is the day that we transfer the operating system and install the M.2, and then first boot. So the first thing we're going to do is install the M.2 in the first M.2 slot. As you can see, it's got a heatsink cover on it. So we have to remove this first, quite simply unscrews. Not quite loose enough, just unscrew the last bit by hand and I drop the screw just there. So we take the cover off, it doesn't clip from the motherboard. And there you can see the clips on the end. And sorry about this, just out of sight, I'm working in quite close quarters here today. So you can see exactly what I'm doing. Just remove the little standoff screw. And then we have to replace the screw and the standoff into the end slot because the M.2 is the full length M.2. So we just put the screw into the end slot and the camera's not focusing on the slot at all. So never mind, it's still focused on the motherboard. And we just screw the standoff onto the screw. All hand tight for now, making sure that the little rubber washer is on as well. So that's now ready. We can just clip it back on to the slot. It just hooks on. If I can just get in the right position. Like that, and it hinges out. Then we take the M.2 itself, making sure that the slot is in the right place, angled at about 20 degrees, and then just with slight pressure, push it home firmly. And as you can see, it still sticks out a bit. But when we close the heatsink and screw it down, it sits flush. Now this heatsink here has two different purposes really. One is to cool the, the actual strip itself, the M.2, but the other is for the graphics card above it, and that is like a little heat shield to help keep the heat from the graphics card itself off the M.2 drive. So I'll zoom back out again, so you can see. And then we carefully just slot the graphics card back in above it. And now the camera decides to focus on the graphics card. That's good. <laughs> and then put the two grub screws in. Now, as you do this, just lift the card up a little. So it actually sits straight. And also it takes the weight off the slot itself. I know the slot has extra reinforcement, but even so, it's better actually to take the weight off the board itself. So the two grub screws are in. Just need to plug the power supply back in now. And we are ready for the next part. Oh, just one other thing. I've still got one wire which is rainbow coloured. But I think I'm going to leave it there for my OCD friends. So we're going to need now an external hard drive and a USB stick, a 16 gigabyte for the USB stick, so that we can transfer my operating system from my 950 Pro, which I have in this system at the moment I'm using, to the new 961. First thing we need to do is to make a recovery drive.
Now we do this simply by going in and typing control panel after pressing the Windows key. Up comes the control panel. Then you just look down the list. Find file history and click on that. Now there's a few things in here that might confuse you. It shows my drive is already installed. I've actually backed it up once, so I'm just going to go through how I did that. If we look on the side, we see at the bottom system image backup. We'll come to that later. And then we see a few options at the top here, which look like the ones that we need, but they're not. We ignore those for now and we go back to the bottom to where it says recovery and click on that. And as you can see at the top of the list here, we've got create a recovery drive. Now we're going to create the drive, of course, on the memory stick that we got the thumb drive. And as I said, that needs to be a 16 gigabyte drive. So we click on that. Backup system files, the recovery drive is checked. Press next. And then we wait a moment for the system to examine itself and see exactly what files need to be used and copied. This takes a while, so I've just speeded this up a little bit. Then we get a choice of where we want the drive to be created. So we click on the USB drive. Once we've done that, we just click Next. And it tells us that everything on the drive is going to be deleted. So use a new drive or a drive that you don't want anything of the information that's on there. Once that's completed, just close the window and then come back down. And this is where we click on the system recovery image. Now we can create a system image by clicking here. Just drag this back into screen. So we're going to do it onto the drive. It's come up now. There we go. That's the two gigabyte external drive. That is chosen. You can choose whichever drive is the relevant one for you. Click next. And then we have the choices. There are some, the EFI, the recovery and the system are already checked. Uh, the others are just my backup drive. So I'm not going to copy those onto the image. You can copy a whole system with this, of course, but I just want the operating system. So we click next and it confirms our backup settings. And they're all going to be saved on my external drive. So I then click backup and off it goes. Once it's completed, you unplug safely and plug the hard drive, the external hard drive and the thumb drive into the new system. And once it's booted up, you will have a choice on the screen. First of all, you'll get your language. I, of course, chose UK English. And then we have options. You need to click on troubleshoot at this point. So we're not going to recover with anything else. We're going to use troubleshoot. And again, in the second screen, we don't want to recover from a drive. We want advanced options. So we click on that. And then we come to this screen, which gives us another choice, system restore. We don't want that. We want system image recovery. We click on that. Then tells us the operating system that's there, which is Windows 10. And again, we click that, and then it goes back to the old Windows 311 type screen, which is very interesting for such a modern operating system. And then it discovers the drive, discovers the build that's been backed up. We just click Next, check the Format and Repartition Disks box, and click Next, and then finally we click Finish, and then we wait. We wait for the system to be transferred so that we can attempt our first start and see if it will work. So it's all installed. It's all being copied. All that remains now for me to do is to press the start button. The system's lit up, which is a good sign. Now my monitor's on the other side of the room. So we'll just swing round and wait. 
So we boot it into BIOS. And we boot it into Windows. It's all worked. So now I'll just log into the system. When I get the option, here we go. And we're up and running. And there's all 24 threads. You've got uh, a message there about doing some updates. We can do that later. And of course, I've got to change over some of the software. The Radeon software has got to come off. And the new Gigabyte and MSI software has got to go on. And of course, update all the drivers as well. Then it's just a question of swapping over my backup hard drive and my two working drives, that is my two SATA SSDs, configure them in RAID, and the system is back and fully functional. Well, the system's up and running. The next thing, of course, is to do some shakedown checks to make sure everything's working properly, and just to see how much better it is. For now, though, thank you for watching.